الحمد لله نستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ونشهد أن سيدنا مولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم ربي شرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to our prayer on the day of Arafah so in the UK at the present moment we're achieved very close to um, the night of Arafah um, so we're not too far away so um, what's the purpose of us gathering like this on this uh, on this particular day uh, why do we do this why does Islam encourage us to do something like this um, and what are the what are the fadail what are the virtues of um, considering this day special what are the virtues of gathering uh, and uh, being uh, acquainted with the spiritual nature of uh, the virtues of a day like this and also connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are very, very important questions because our time is precious and, um, you know, our time is precious. And for that reason, the time that we take out should uh, at least you know, bring some fruition in terms of the value that we are spending in, in, in doing these kind of activities. So what I've done is, um, I'm just going to start off um, quite simple. There's a, a kitab that I just picked up. Um, uh, it's in Arabic. And um, I just really, really enjoyed the way the kitab was written in Arabic and uh, the virtues and some of the ahadith that are presented in this kitab. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to spend a bit of time uh, just reading through this kitab with you uh, and um, also uh, whilst I do that I will translate and explain uh, the reason why we are here so the first of all ayam al-ashr min zil hijjah hi ayam al-ashr awla minhu wa tu'addu min a'azam al-azmanati wal-awqat faqad faddalaha allahu wa afradaha an ghayriha min awqat so the last, these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, they are those 10 days that have a very high maqam. Their maqam is such that they are considered as the most special of all the 10 days throughout the whole Islamic calendar. So it collates and inclusive within that is it's considered as one of the greatest moments, one of the greatest of times to be in. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given it such great virtue and made it something unique. From any other day from any other time, from any other day, from any other time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has differentiated this day of Yom al-Arafah from all the other times through a numerous fadail, through numerous virtues and things that differentiate and make this day unique relative to the other days. And one of the special things and the virtues of this day as is the fortune that one picks from this day or takes from this day in the abundance of ujur wal hasanat of reward and good deeds. So this is a very, very special day, uh, as you can see. When? When does it, you pick up all these virtues? When do you, uh, when does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala endow you with such riches and treasures? When you collect in it the highest level, the ummahatul ibadat. 
some of the most highest level of ibadat or the the mothers or the mother of worship so this day is considered special on the basis of the ibadah that we do the, on the basis of the acts of worship and because we have reached towards well we're coming towards the end of the 10 days of Zul Hijjah uh, on that basis Yom Al Arafah is considered the most virtuous and in this particular day those acts of virtue that you commit to are in relation to your ibadat, in relation to your acts of worship. So your worship is not just solely about um, motions or physical motions. Our physical motions can be in terms of your body, so in terms of salah, reading, uh, praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is a virtue, but also in other organs such as your tongue, doing the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, also reading the Qur'an. So these acts of worship, just alone, just through the physical action itself and the intention of gaining reward, becomes a great virtue. But something beyond that, which connects a person even more so with their creator, is when their heart connects with those physical motions. So when your heart connects with the acts of worship that you do, so when you are reading salah, you are thinking of the the uh, the uh, the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the dunya you're thinking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your mind is focused on Allah in terms of his signs and his qudra his power then that connects your heart to your actions now when that connects your heart to your actions then it's on a a, a kind of a, a sliding scale that your scale accelerates in terms of the amount of reward you gain and also in terms of amount of intensity and closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you gain. So on that basis, your acts are important, but to connect your heart with those acts is a very essential part of this. So out of the ummahat of ibadat, you have minas salah, wa siyam, wal hajj, wa ghayriha. So notice here that hajj is a very, very important time. Uh, because your Araf, Yom Al Arafa, fundamentally is an a rukun of Hajj. It's a very important part of Hajj. It's an obligation of Hajj, and if you do not do Qiyam in Arafa, you do not uh, reach uh, the land of Arafa on this particular day, then your Hajj is not accepted. So for that reason, it's a very important aspect of Hajj. But in terms of acts of worship there is a differentiation between the ibadat and the acts of hajj so those of us who unfortunately were not able to do hajj for the current situation even though many of us had intention many of us had even planned to be here there doing the tawaf of the bait of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the kaaba and also acts of worship uh, around the kaaba and also going to uh, Muzdalifa and, uh, and uh, Mina and various other places as the rites and rituals of Hajj. Those kind of intentions that you've had, they have not gone to waste. Because if that was your intention, then inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you entirely for all the intention and the, uh, the, the, the whole idea and the planning that you put into this effort. Because of the current climate, clearly uh, many, of us, many of us have not been able to. Those fortunate small group of people who are there at this very moment in time, who are currently in, the, in these days of Hajj, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them immensely for their efforts. And also may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the Hajj and make that as a means of reward and maghfirah and forgiveness for the rest of us. Now, on this basis, even reading salah and fasting on this particular day becomes a great virtue to fast in Zul Hijjah, the first 10 days of Zul Hijjah, and to fast especially on Yawm al-Arafah is of great virtue. And this is something that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would do, and he would commend others for doing the same. So on this basis, وَلَا يَكُونَ ذَلَكَ فِي غَيْرِ عَشْرٍ مِنْ عَيَامَ الْسَنَةِ that this level of reward is not attained from any other 10 days 
in the year. قد بين علماء أن عيام العشر من الحجة أفضل من عيام العشر الأخيرة من شهر رمضان. سبحان الله. And the ulama have explained that the ten days of Dhul Hijjah are more virtuous than the ten last days of Shahr Ramadan, the month of Ramadan. Subhanallah. Amma liyali al ashr akhira min Shahr Ramadan, fahiya abdul min liyali ashra min Zil Hijjah. And the last ten nights of Ramadan, so not the days but the nights, the last ten nights of Ramadan carry greater virtue <coughs> than the last 10 nights of Zul the the 10 nights of Zul Hijjah so already you can see that the days of Arafah carry more virtue and more reward than the 10 last days of Ramadan then there are many many other hadith and there are there is a lot of indication even in the Quran of the virtues of this special day where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَالَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَالْفَجْرُ وَلَيَالِ عَشْرِ وَالْفَجْرُ وَلَيَالِ عَشْرِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes qasam. He swears by fajr, the time of fajr. And وَلَيَالِ عَشْرِ and the, and the nights, the ten nights. And these ten nights are in rest response to the Ramadan. And some of us even say that these are referring to Zil Hijjah. The Mufassirin ulama tashtimul ayam al ashr min zil hijjah afzal ayam. They say that these are the most uh, virtuous ayam, uh, days. Now, further to this, we have um, also the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ma min ayam in aadum in the Allahi wa la ahabu alayhi min amali fi hina min hazi al ayam al asr or hab ha ashr." فَأَكْثَرُوا فِيهِنَّ مِنَ التَّحْلِيلِ وَتَقْبِيرِ وَتَحْمِيدِ So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that there are no days of greater virtue with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nor does they are more beloved in, in terms of acts of deeds except these days or these ten days. So increase in it تَحْلِيل وَتَقْبِيرِ وتحميد. So تهليل وتكبير وتحميد تهليل meaning لا إله إلا الله تكبير meaning الله أكبر and تحميد الحمد لله So these are words that glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala This is the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So in these particular days we should remain um, making our time the most efficient that it can be made and our efficiency is based on this idea that we remain in a state that we are constantly praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you need to use any kind of means to remind you to remain or keep your tongue moist in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this special day. And throughout, in fact, the whole of Dhul Hijjah, but more so during this particular time, recognizing from the time of Fajr, on the 9th of Zul Hijjah, i.e. this morning for us in the UK, um, up till uh, Asr on the 13th, those days after every Salah for males to actually do the Takbir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in, 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 in an audible way and for women to do it in a silent way are those acts which are considered as great, of great virtue. And in fact, according to most Madahib, they are obligatory. So this is an important aspect uh, of the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made these elements of obligations as well as acts of virtue to do the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these special days. And there are many reasons why praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefits us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in any, any need of any benefit from us, but rather it's for our own personal benefit. So on this basis, that truly only behold with the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do hearts feel contentment. And it's through this contentment 
because the zikr of Allah, the praising of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a way of cleansing the heart. So just like you would have somebody who um, has a car and they drive around in their special car. If your car is something which is of very little value, then most people who have cars of very little value are less likely to take great care of them. It's not considered as a prized possession. They're more likely to uh, be less cautious on the road. And if there's a, the odd scratch here and there, then they will pay less heed to actually ensuring that the scratch is removed or the dirt is removed from the car. So if you think of the car as your heart, your qalb, so on that basis, if your heart is in such a state that it's no different to uh, an inexpensive car, a car which has very little value, then even when you get scratch marks on the surface of the body of the car and you get those scratch marks or those black dots on your heart, then it doesn't have as much an impact on you. And as time goes on, you don't have remorse, you continue to become insensitized. And as a result of this insensitivity, you gain more and more dots on the hearts. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kalla balarana ala qulubihim ma kanu yaksibun. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that behold, there is rust upon their hearts from what they have earned. So this blackness embodies the heart, the spiritual heart. And as a result of this, the heart becomes black. And they become deaf, dumb and blind. And there is no return for them. And in that particular situation, then what they see of the dunya is only of the material world. What they see of the dunya is only what the physical eyes can see, only what the nose can smell physically, only what the ears can hear, only what the hands can feel, only what temperatures can be sensed. That's the limit to what they are able to visualize of the immense beauty and the treasures of the dunya that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. Whereas those whose hearts are open and there it has been an element of cleansing that's been happening to their hearts, their basira, their vision opens. They see beyond the physical and they enter the domain of the spiritual world. What does that mean? That means that when they see those things that we take for granted, even something that people just see an abundance of around them, but yet they don't appreciate the value in this because their hearts are closed. So when a person walks and he sees a flower or a leaf, just on something as basic or considered as basic as that, that person's heart connects with Allah, just on seeing something as simple as this, the heart connects with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the first thing that enters the heart and the first thing that comes on their tongue is this, the tahleel, la ilaha illallah, the tahmeed, alhamdulillah, and the takbir, Allahu Akbar. These words emanate from their mouth like fragrance. And these words reach the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that connection with the heart becomes even greater and much more magnified. So on this particular day, on this particular day, it's very important that we connect not only our physical actions, but also our, our heart to these physical actions. And the way to do that is number one, to do the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to remember Allah much. And it's a way, uh, Remember Allah's names in these special days, these known days. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So 
if one does this, then what you will see is the true fruits of that connection. Ramadan has passed us. And this is another opportunity for us to gain a boost to be connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we're going to finish off with some important virtues. And I'll just mention these in straight directly in English because it's probably easier for me to do that. Um, so recognizing that the nights of both Eid, so we're approaching Eid tomorrow. So the night of both Eids are amongst the great sacred nights in the Islamic calendar. So the night of Eid al-Adha is from the most, those nights that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made an oath has taken the glorious Quran to remain awake, that we should remain awake during this night and form ibadah. And this will be a source of great virtue and reward for us. So the ibadah of this night is equal to the worship of Laylatul Qadr. So the ibadah of this particular night which is the most special night, so uh, most special night of Dhul Hijjah is equivalent to the night of Laylatul Qadr in terms of its ibadah. So here Abu Amama radiallahu anhu reports that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, whosoever stays awake and performs ibadah, worship on the nights of the two Eids with hope for reward from Allah Ta'ala, his heart will not die on the day. Yani, Yawm al-Qiyamah. On the day of resurrection, on the day that we will be all gathered, his heart will not die. When hearts will be dead. Because his heart will be pure. His acts of worship will be immense. And for that day, his heart will live. Imam Shafi'i rahimallah reports and says, indeed the dua is accepted on five nights. The night of Jum'ah, i.e. the Thursday night, the night of Eid al-Adha, and the night of Eid al-Fitr, the first night of Rajab, and the night of the middle of the 15th of Shaban. Imam Shafi'i has clearly outlined there that to remain in the act of worship during this special night is virtuous and the dua is accepted. So this is a very, very important night to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make abundant dua. So also, Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu relates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, on no days is the worship of Allah more beloved to him than in the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. This is recorded in Tirmizi and Ibn Majah that these 10 days, there are, they are the most, virtu most virtu virtuous of days of worship for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu related that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, no days are as weighty with Allah and so liked by him for good deeds than the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. So on these days increasingly read, Subhanallah wa la ilaha illallah wallahu wa akbar walhamdulillah. So pure is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no deity but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the greatest and all praise is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So this is a very special night. And on this special night, it's important that we maintain our acts of worship. Sometimes it can be very easy for us to make preparations for Eid. And for that reason, we don't give the value to this night. So try to stay up as much as you can. Get your children, get your family to stay up. Stay in the state of ibadah. Read the Quran. Connect with the Quran. Connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by doing this, then what you're doing is you're boosting, you're charging yourself in, to, that, to that degree that you will then connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such a way as did the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. And it's been recorded that Abdullah ibn Umar and Abu Huraira radiallahu anhum on Ayyam al Yom al Arafah, they would gather in the markets and they would do the loudly, they would do the takbir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillah alhamd. And they would do this abundantly in the marketplaces, loud, clearly, in front of everybody. The marketplaces are the worst places to be, the masajid are the best places to be. 
and they will go to those places and not only would this be a reminder for themselves but it would also be a reminder for those people who are in the marketplace and they would do this abundantly go into the market and do the takbir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the immense ability to truly appreciate and recognize the virtues of this day and the virtues of this night of Eid and by bringing our family close telling them about this showing them the virtue in this through your own actions it's only when you act upon this that your family members will do the same connect with the Quran read the Quran read Salah do istighfar turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I remember Yawm al-Arafah is the most hated day for shaitan because in this very day Yawm al-Arafah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends the heavens and forgives immensely the immense forgiveness is so such an element of grievance for shaitan on this day Allah forgives so many people the hujjaj who are there in Yawm al-Arafah in Arafah and also those of us who are, all, who are unable to be able to perform those rituals but we are there in our homes but our heart is connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our heart is connected to the hujjaj at that particular time so make dua make dua for the hujjaj who are there the number there is quite appreciately quite a lot less than it normally should be and I can probably feel the Kaaba crying on the basis that there is such a low number relative to what the previous years have held so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to be able to do hajj may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to be present there in the coming years may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise this waba this um, element of uh, transmission of virus and so forth uh, away from us so that we are able to connect closely much more so with our loved ones and also with our masajid and we are able to come together as communities together and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase the purity in our hearts so that we can connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makers of those who can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the world who can hear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who can smell the beauty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in the world and connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this particular way and to appreciate. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our sins and so that and enhance our good deeds and make us appreciate the value of such a day and such a night. Now I'm going to call on uh, Mufti Saif al-Islam. I'm sure one of you, most of you are fully aware of Mufti Saab. Uh, Mufti Saab has, was uh, also uh, present uh, during the last nights of uh, Laylatul Qadr uh, this Ramadan while we were all going through this COVID-19 scenario and Mufti Saab has uh, thankfully, alhamdulillah uh, uh, you know, basically uh, accepted our call to come here again and also to uh, present uh, 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 the virtues of such a day and such a night and also uh, finally to do a dua so let's just uh, also recognize that we are very grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about regarding the ulama that we have who clearly can guide us towards Allah and also gain and give us that ability to, uh, to charge ourselves spiritually to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.